but I think propaganda shop turned it out. We have gotten the, uh, the okay from Cardinal Spellman to go ahead with this, and uh, I wouldn't presume to trace the uh, lines of authority within the Catholic Church, how they get their information that they don't with. We've always said, you know, in an admiring way, that the, the Jesuits uh, form the greatest intelligence service in the world, we always have. Within the Catholic Church, how they get their information that they don't with. We've always said, you know, in an admiring way, that the, the Jesuits uh, form the greatest intelligence service in the world. The Jesuits form the greatest intelligence service in the world. Isn't that interesting? Because the Jesuits have been around a lot longer than the CIA. The Jesuits have been around a lot longer than the United States. All right, and you think about the confessional booth. The next time you go to the confessional booth, think about this. When you say, uh, Father, forgive me for I have sinned, I cheated on my wife. Now, that priest has the goods on you. He can... He can uh, uh, threaten you and say, well, I'm going to tell your wife if you don't do this favor for me, right? And so what a great tool to have to be able to manipulate and influence people all around the world in every country. And that's kind of crazy. But let's look at this here in Revelation 17, verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So the Roman Catholic Church reigns over all the governments, all the kings, including presidents. They reign over all the governments of the world. All right. And if we could, uh, let's take a look. At, wait a second. Let me show you something here. Another thing that he said. Okay. the church, how they get their information that they don't with. We've always said, you know, in an admiring way, that they the, their information that they don't with. We've always said, you know, in an admiring way. We've always said in an admiring way, talking about the Jesuits, huh? So that's an interesting choice of words. We've always said in an admiring way. And here in verse 6 it says, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Pretty interesting, huh? So let me uh, sort of explain something here. The great whore, the woman, the mother of harlots, these are all references to a woman that pretends to be the wife, right? like a prostitute. She's not the wife, she just is uh, pretends to be the wife. And so that's who this uh, woman, great harlot, uh, mother of harlots, is. And uh, they are not the Church of God, right? They pretend to be the Church of God, and they're not. All right, and the mother of harlots uh, is just a reference, meaning that uh, it's equivalent to the Roman Catholic Church being the mother church. Catholicism means universal, so they're a universal uh, mother church. And um, so uh, it's important to understand, I think, in my opinion, um, the four beasts of Daniel. So if we go to like Daniel 7 and read about the four beasts, we read in... Verse 17, these great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. Okay. And then, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. All right. It's different than all the other kingdoms, right? Because it's a, it's not a like the United States or... It's not like the Babylonian Empire. It is di very different from all the kingdoms that have ever been. And um, it says break it in pieces. So they, when you have all these governments all around the world, they are, in a sense, broken in pieces, but they are all under the Roman Catholic Church. Now, it's important to understand here that Daniel mentions the first three beasts of the four. 
The first three are the Babylonian Empire, the Medes and Persian Empire, and the Greek Empire. And he never mentions the fourth empire, but we can know what the fourth empire is by going to Luke 2 and reading. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. So Caesar Augustus was the Roman emperor. That means the Roman Empire had power over all the world. So the Roman Empire has to be the fourth beast. So if we could go back to Revelation 17 real quickly. And we read about the beast that was and is not and yet is. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. The Roman Catholic, I'm sorry, the Roman Empire that was and is not and yet is, which that means it was uh, it was broken down and then built back up. So it went from a physical empire to a spiritual empire, right? And then let's go to Revelation 13. And we read a little bit about this as well when it says... Um, he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. I now notice this. Uh, he exercises all the power of the first beast and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. So all the people of the world today, they are worshiping their own government as if it was the Roman Empire. In other words, you got people on the left and you got people on the right, and they're all worshiping their own government, which is the beast. And all the governments, all the beasts of the world, they are under the beast of Revelation. All right. And again, whose deadly wound was healed. So that, again, is another reference to the Roman Empire collapsing and then rebuilding itself up into the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. So, um, again. Uh, one last thing, I guess. Uh, uh, I always encourage people to stay out of politics, right? I don't know why people um, get into politics, um, but uh, I always encourage people to get out of it. It's a whirlwind. And what do you think that if you vote for the right politician, he's going to make the world a better place? Well, here in First John chapter 2, verse 17, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All right, don't love the world. In fact, we'll go one step further before I close this out. Um, let's see if I get this right here. No, no. Let me do it this way. Uh, oh, I think... Uh, let me see. I apologize for this here. I think I got the wrong word in there. There we go. Let's do this. There it is. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You think these politicians are going to make the world better? Man, you're, bu you're buying into their baloney, okay? And I just want to encourage you to stay away from that. Beware of these guys and beware of these wolves.